hello guys welcome to today's lecture in today's lecture i'll be showing you guys how to simulate a plate heat exchanger now a plate heat exchanger is a heat exchange equipment that is used to transfer heat from one fluid to another so in a case where you have um, a hot and a cold fluid, maybe you want to increase the temperature of the cold fluid, you would have to pass both the hot and the cold fluid through a heat exchange equipment simultaneously so that the heat exchange can take place. Now, why it is important to um, simulate a plate heat exchanger or learn how to simulate it is because the plate heat exchangers are one of the uh, most efficient heat exchangers in recent times right they are arguably five times more efficient than the um, shell and tube heat exchanger so it is very important that we actually learn how to simulate and specify this particular equipment so for today's lecture we'll be having a brief introduction then i'll be showing you how to simulate it using the simple endpoint model then also using the rigorous model as well then i'll end with how to transfer the um, rigorous data to the simple end model so let's get into it so for the um for the introduction, we'll just be using the ISIS help. So it says um, the plate exchanger, the plate exchanger unit operation solves heat and material balances for two stream plate heat exchangers. It says plate heat exchangers consists of plates packed in a frame then you normally you have two streams the hot and the cold where the um, heat exchange actually takes place now then you have your um, heat transfer equation here then you also have your simple endpoint formula which is Q is equal to minus UA change in temperature where um, change in temperature has to do with the log mean temperature difference then a is surface area yu is the overall heat transfer coefficient right so the simple endpoint model actually works based on this equation which is q is equal to minus ua change in t subscript lm right this is the equation that that particular model is based upon right while for the rigorous um rating or the rigorous specification or model you would have to specify a lot of things that relate to the sizing and geometry of the heat exchanger so that one is quite complex and would actually require you to be more detailed in your specifications so i'll be showing you guys how to simulate both models in this particular lesson so let's get into it okay so for this particular tutorial we'll be using a crude oil stream as our feed so we'll be heating up this crude oil feed from one particular temperature to another right so to create our crude oil stream feed we'll be using the petroleum assay other than the oil manager so for this particular simulation we are using the petroleum assay right and in the petroleum assay we'll be using the bonga 2015 crude oil so if you can see my cursor 
I'm clicking on Petroleum Asai. Then I click on Add. Then I'll be making use of Assay Components to Celsius. Assay Components Celsius to 850. Okay. Then I'll search for Nigeria. Right? Because that particular kind of crude is from Nigeria. Then I'll just search for it. Okay, so I'll make use of I'll make use of Bonga twenty fifteen. Okay, so once I specify it and I click OK, it automatically adds the components. It automatically adds the components to the component list as well as the fluid package. So that's what you get from using the um, petroleum assay. It specifies both your components and the fluid package for that particular process, right? So I don't need to specify any of those. So I could go to the simulation environment straight away. Okay. So in the simulation environment, We'll be getting our um, plate exchanger from the model palette, right? And from what I'm seeing, this is the plate exchanger right here. If you can see my cursor, that's the plate exchanger. So we'll be specifying it. And we will be starting with the first model, which is the simple endpoint model. Then afterward, I will also show you guys the rigorous model as well. Okay, so we'll be creating the four streams, the inlet and outlet of the cold side, and then the inlet and outlet of the hot side. So the hot stream gets cold and the cold stream gets hot. So our cold stream in this case is our crude oil feed while the hot stream would be water or steam rather so we'll be using steam as our hot stream or our heating fluid so let's begin the specification so um let me see so we have the hot side inlet the hot side outlet the cold side outlet and the cold side inlet so our cold side inlet will be crude oil crude oil Let's see. Heated oil as our cold side outlet. Then for hot side inlet, it will be steam. And then for hot side outlet, we can just say hot water. Enter. So We'll be specifying all our um, process conditions right now.
So we can go to worksheet. We'll be starting with um, crude oil. So for crude oil, we'll be using a temperature of um, 25 degrees Celsius. 25. Then pressure of 1 ATM. Yeah. 1 ATM. Yeah. The molar flow of, let's say, 100 kilogram per hour. That's for crude oil. Then for our steam, let's say we use a temperature of 150 degrees Celsius, then steel pressure of 1 ATM. And still yet a molar flow of 100 kilogram per hour. Then for our composition, for steam, composition of water will be 1. Composition of water will be 1. Okay. Then we need to do something about the crude oil stream. So I'll be specifying it from outside. So now we have already um, specified the process conditions. We are now left with composition. Now, in the case where you use the petroleum assay to create your crude stream, all you need to do is to click on petroleum assay and then click on attach existing. Now, when you select attach, attach existing, you have the opportunity to actually choose the particular crude you picked when you were creating your petroleum assay in the properties environment. So we selected Bonga 2015 initially and that's why it's appearing here. So you just click on it and you see it says assay attached. It automatic automatically installs the composition of that particular crude feed right so you don't need to start installing it manually so it just specifies everything for you automatically so we have specified our hot feed and our cold feed now we go back to design so like i said we are using the simple end point at the moment now our status bar says unknown delta p so we're making use of five kilopascal each for both the hot and the cold side. So it still says under specified. So I guess we need to specify one of the outlet temperatures or so for it to become fully specified. So perhaps I specify for heated oil, which is our crude outlet. I'll specify 65 degrees Celsius for the outlet okay so now that i specified it the whole um equipment has solved is now fully specified so this is how you actually specify when you are simulating with the simple end model it's quite simple very simple to use so this model is actually very very simple. So it, you get the um, you get the overall UA, the area, and then the heat transfer coefficient. So that's it for this particular model. Very simple model to use. Once you just specify your streams and their process conditions, every other thing is calculated by ISIS. So now the more complex one or the one that is quite a bit tricky is the rigorous plate, which I'll be explaining to you guys now. Now, for this one, we'll be using 
another plate heat exchanger to actually explain how it works right so i'll just add another plate exchanger by the side and then we'll work with that so for this one i'll still create my streams so maybe this one i'll say steam one so that they don't have the same stream name steam one then hot water one then okay so i'll use crude oil one crude oil one then heated oil one enter so now next will be to specify the process conditions of the inlet streams so for this particular one i won't be using the same data i used in the first heat exchanger i will be changing it because of the rigorous specifications Okay, so for crude oil, I'll be using a temperature of 40 degrees Celsius. For crude oil, 40 degrees Celsius. Pressure of 200. then molar flow of 100 then for the steam i'll be using a temperature of 220 220 then pressure of 2500 2500 then mass flow mass flow of 200 okay so We'll be repeating the same procedure for the crude oil stream again. Go to petroleum assay and then attach existing. So our crude oil stream has solved. Then for steam, we'll make the composition one for steam. We'll make the composition of water one okay so water is one fine so now next thing is to um select the rigorous model from the parameters tab so you go back to design then you come over to the parameters tab and then you select simple and um rigorous uh, yeah edr plate sorry edr plates so edr plates will now take us to the rigorous model so once you come to parameters tab you select the edr plate right so once you click on edr 
next is to click on the rigorous plate here right this comes up now let's go back so if you click on if you click on simple endpoints if you click on simple endpoints you will not be able to assess the rigorous environment so for you to be able to assess it you have to click on the edr plate so when you click on it you'll be able to assess the environment now after clicking on rigorous plate the next will be to click on the view edr browser if you can see my cursor quite below you click on view edr browser then you can exit this so now we are in the edr environment where we can make detailed specifications of the rigorous model so this is where you actually do all your specifications now how this works is that whatever you are specifying here has to be in line with your process conditions so whatever you are specifying over here in the rigorous environment has to be in line with these specifications of your fluids your hot and cold fluid so whatever you are inputting here you have to put these process conditions into consideration right so i'll just be using some um assumed values to show how it actually works so now we are going to specify the geometry of the heat exchanger now first off you have number of exchangers obviously one then you have double banking option i'll be leaving it as no right then you have number of passes i'll leave it as one as well then you have inlet port point you have outlet port point depending on whatever um specifications you want you can just select them so but i'll be leaving these ones in their default mode then number of channels i'll be making use of five for this particular simulation number of channels for both the cold and the hot side i'll be making use of five right so once i'm done specifying that the next thing will be to specify the um ex yeah the exchanger geometry which is the plate details so i'll be specifying the plate details next so this is where you now specify details about the heat exchanger so you start with the name of the manufacturer the plate name depending on where you got your data from then you go to chevron angle i'll be using a chevron angle of 30 degrees then you have your horizontal port distance okay so next you have the horizontal port centers distance so for that i'll be using a value of 15 inches sorry okay before i continue let me put my simulation on hold so I don't have issues so I'm using 15 inches then for the vertical I'll be using 500 
I'll be using 500 mm. Then for the plate thickness, I'll be using 10 millimeters. For compressed plate pitch, I'll be using 5 millimeters. For port diameter, I'll be using 5.7 inch. 5.7 inch. Then for plate width, I'll be using 21.7. Twenty one point seven inch and then for area of plates I'll be using a value of two point eight feet squared. Okay, and then number of plates for area will just be one so now when you are done specifying the details the plate details aspen is actually um draws like i said let me use the word draw it draws a sketch of your heat exchanger on the right so it draws it and then it gives you the dimensions that you have specified. The dimensions are the ones you actually specified the horizontal port center, the vertical port center in millimeters. So it's based on what you specified. It now gives you a sketch of your heat exchanger as you can see on the screen. So with this um, specification, we'll go back to the Let me see. So we'll go back to our simulation environment. Then I'll now take it back to active my solver back to active. And you can see that the heat exchanger has solved. So you have your you have your okay message. So now those values that were entered in the rigorous model these values right here are actually with respect to the process condition of your feed right so that's the thing so whatever values you are specifying here whatever values you are specifying in the rigorous model have to be in relation with your process conditions if you try to use a particular data for a, a different process condition your simulation may not solve so you have to be very careful when you are specifying the rigorous model so now from what we have here we specify just the inlet of the heat exchanger as you can see we didn't specify anything from the outlet section that is in the rigorous model but in the um simple the simple endpoint right we use the simple endpoint over here now the simple endpoint we still had to specify the outlet the outlet temperature of our crude oil we had to specify the outlet but in the rigorous we didn't specify anything at all in the outlet so when you are specifying or when you are using the rigorous model you have to put that into consideration that you have no power over the outlet conditions so whatever you are specifying in the inlet would be such that you would still get your desired outlet conditions that's the conditions you desire in the process. So these are the things you have to put into consideration when you are using the rigorous model. But bear in mind that the rigorous model is more, um, more accurate and it should be used. It will be highly preferable in sim simulations where 
you are trying to um portray real life scenarios so moving on there are some um details we can get from this um rigorous model so i'll be showing us some things we can see from this rigorous model so in the rigorous model on the um edr navigation you can see um the construction specifications you can see the okay the edr diagram so this is like a diagram of the our heat exchanger that we have simulated the rigorous heat exchanger actually this is the the i think this should be the front view then this is the side view this one the first one is the side view then this is the front view then you have materials for construction then let's check our results okay input summary let me see yeah okay exchanger diagram let's check calculation details okay so if you need more details about the um exchanger you can actually check your calculation details it gives you calculation details based on the hot side and the cold side then if you need plots you can also get plots of both the hot side and the cold side so for the hot side you have different kinds of plots a lot of plots over here you have hot stream temperature versus a fractional distance from top you can check other plots you have hot side temperature versus fractional distance you have pressure versus fractional distance a lot of plots can be gotten from this calculation details same with the code side the code side data is also here right and then the plots as well you can check all that so the rigorous model is a very very detailed model what else do you have you have your your ex yeah, your exchanger geometry you have your exchanger geometry then the exchanger diagram then the costing of the exchanger as well so a lot of things can be found here yes then you have your you have your input summary just a summary of your inputs then you have your result summary okay yes i was looking for this this is your api sheets your heat exchanger specification sheets right gives you a lot of details about that particular heat exchanger so as you can see so let's go back to the simulation environment so now the last part of this um lecture is to show you how to transfer your rigorous data transferring rigorous data to the simple endpoint model so now this is our this is actually the rigorous exchanger this second one the plate 101 now if you wanted to transfer this particular data now you want to transfer it to the rigorous model or you sorry you want to transfer it to the simple end model all you have to do is to go to the rigorous tab and then click on transfer ua to simple you can see my cursor transfer ua to simple so you click on it you click on it and then you go back to
okay so to convert from rigorous or to transfer data from rigorous to the simple endpoint i said we'll be using this so i'll just make a simple illustration of that and we'll end the lecture here now so i want to just um, make some adjustments to our process conditions just so that it can be properly illustrated so i'll be changing this to 2 200 200 then i'll change the crude oil to 25 enter then this i'll just change it to 300 degrees sorry um 300 kilogram more power for flow rate then i'll put the solver on active okay so we are still in rigorous we are still in rigorous you can still check we are still in rigorous and all the data is still the way it is the play details are still the way they are so but i want to transfer the rigorous calculations to simple endpoint so i'll click on this right so once i click on it the um the rigorous environment just goes out entirely because we are back to the simple endpoint so as you can see you have your um outlet conditions then we can go and check it has automatically changed to simple endpoint the rating method has changed to simple endpoint you can still change it back to edr you click yes it goes back to edr and you can enter the edr environment right to enter the but if you want to change it back you want to transfer the specifications you have made in the rigorous to simple endpoints you click on transfer ua to simple and then your rigorous environment clears out and you are back to simple endpoint so that's it so at this point we have come to the end of this video right so the most important thing is to specify your conditions properly even if you are using the simple endpoint model the rigorous model you specify your conditions properly if you are using the rigorous model you specify it with respect to the geometry of your plates everything they must be in alignment so that the process can solve i hope you have gained some knowledge today because this is the end of this particular tutorial now i would like you to drop your comments like this video and subscribe if you haven't done so thank you and have a good day